Welcome to the French Wedding Podcast with your host Naim, the only podcast in English about weddings in France. Great conversations, tips and insights about your French wedding, some wisdom before your big day, and the opportunity to hear wedding professionals actually living and working in France, only for your day to be the most amazing to remember. Hello everyone and welcome to the French Wedding Podcast. Greetings from France, this is the place we're recording this show. I'm Naim, professional ceremony officiant based in my hometown, Paris, and I created this show especially for future brides and grooms willing to get married in Paris or anywhere in France. Each episode is an occasion to meet a main actor of the industry, can be a vendor such as a wedding planner, hair and makeup artist, bridal salon, videographer, venue owner, bloggers, you name it. This show exists to bring you some insight about how people do things in France regarding the wedding industry, but we also share funny stories, things to know, and special memories when we happen to work together on the very same wedding. Today my guest is Fran Bologna, an award-winning wedding and portrait photographer based in Paris. He decided to leave his job in 2014 to focus on his photography business and never look back since. His entrepreneurial mindset led him to grow his company from scratch to a current team of six photographers as well as other team members. His vision? Make people happy over profit. This customer-first approach got him to work with more than a thousand couples during his career. You'll hear great tips about how to pick the right photographer for your day, along with his views on how to storytell a wedding day and much more. So without further ado, please welcome Fran Bologna the Paris photographer. Fran, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Naim. It's an honor and a privilege. Well, that's what I was about to say, because uh, to be really, really honest with you, I couldn't wait anymore to do this interview with you, which is not really uh, an interview as always. It's a casual conversation between uh, the professionals of the industry. Uh, you are the Paris photographer. You're not a Paris photographer. This is what I've heard, or? Well, yes. Uh, when I chose this name in 2013, I wanted to make a bold statement. You know, I didn't. There were other photographers, there were other brand names, you know, that included uh, Paris photographer, like a Paris photographer, my Paris photographer, and one that I found that was really, really strong at that time. It's one and only photography in Paris. And, mm -hmm. well, I said, well, I'm not the one and only, but I'm. I want to be the Paris photographer. And even if I didn't, I was not at that level, you right. know, it helped me to become ambitious mm -hmm. and set a goal. I told myself, I know I want to be the go-to photographer in Paris. You know, when someone thinks about taking photos in Paris, they should think about the Paris photographer. Well, I think this uh, this is a brilliant statement. You're also an incredible entrepreneur. We had uh, I had the chance to, uh, to have a conversation with you on a Parisian cafe. Apart from being a, a great, great entrepreneur and have goals like this, how do you decide like this to say, this is going to be me and I'm going to be the person that people are looking forward to when they are traveling? What are your beliefs uh, as a photographer? Huh. <laughs> I know it's a hard question. Wait, let me think about it because there are so many things. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have many beliefs that I uh, had to uh, fabricate. And mm -hmm. let me start by the fact that, you know, most of the artists are usually insecure. And I was very insecure about my work. You know, mm -hmm. I would take a photo and I would just not like it. Right. And I hear this very often from other artists. And then I would show this photo. I would post it on Facebook. Right. And this was like in 2012, 2013. And I would get a lot of likes and people saying like, wow, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And I would like, how can people like it? Because the composition is not perfect. The lines are not perfect. And then I think that having people believe in you right. is very important. So I had to start building up my beliefs and say, well, okay, I, I might be on the right track right. becoming a good artist but I have to work hard. And that's one of my beliefs. Okay. Hard work leads to success. It's almost inevitable. And I have my father as a kind of like a role model. He's still working. Mm -hmm. He's not retired. And he has been working his entire life. How old is he? He's born in 57. Oh, well, wow. I can do the math yeah, right now. 63 Wait. something. Yeah, 63. He's from the, yeah. 
and and he's still working mm-hmm. and i think that's important because you know it's important for his health for um for everything so i kind of got this i would not say discipline but this um desire Values? to mm-hmm. maybe oh, value yes the, the desire to work right right to to work hard mm-hmm. and i remember this uh quote from will smith you know he was saying something like when the other people are working i'm working mm-hmm. when the other people are eating i'm working right. when the other people are sleeping i'm working <laughs> you know so something so in like the end that. You, you you gain some traction yeah yeah so i would say that hard work is one of my strong beliefs and then business related is we want to make people happy mm-hmm. and i think that i measure it and we as a team we measure success not by our financial profit mm-hmm. we measure success by the number of people that we make happy i strongly agree with this obviously i think i think everybody have when i see your website because I've been looking at your website, obviously. I really, really, really understand now the persona behind it because everything is so smooth. Everything is very, very well thought, especially for the bride looking for advices. I really had the impression when I was looking at your website that I was going through your central nervous system of Fran thinking about every detail that a bride could have in mind when she or uh, or the groom is choosing his photographer or even the videographer because you're not only recommending we're offering yeah. video services too exactly Definitely. yeah yeah but you also recommend how to choose your officiant you're uh, you're very helpful i think it makes a difference that kind of resumes it you know because when i started out i learned marketing uh, i had a job mm-hmm. like everyone before becoming a photographer or an right. entrepreneur and i was uh, taking photos at sunrise very early in the morning or an, for an hour a couple of hours and then jump in the subway and go to work and mm-hmm. coming out of work sometimes i would shoot in the evening and only then go to sleep but when i was going to my job i would spend like 50 minutes or one hour in transportation like subway commuting mm-hmm. i was reading even when i was you know i had my job i was already working as a photographer i was reading on how to build a website how to optimize it you know mm-hmm. for search engines because you can be the most talented artist in the town if nobody can find you that's true you know uh, <laughs> you're you stay unknown there you yeah. go so uh, i was reading i was learning about marketing and i don't remember where i stumbled upon the, the information maybe it was gary vinerchuk mm-hmm. uh, but it was something like which is a famous entrepreneur for those who don't know you can find it on google or youtube true. He's like a social media guru and a serial entrepreneur, yeah. and he has a great energy. And he says he says a lot of interesting things. In, That's in, true. And I think that we, we can all learn from, um, from him. What I learned was something that if you really care about your clients, mm-hmm. and if you're trying to be as helpful as possible, you will win on every aspect. Yes. And I remember it was 2014, something like that. And I was uh, starting hitting number one uh, in Google for a few keywords. Now we should be number one for a lot of keywords, mm-hmm. by the way, because I work even more on this and I'm actually very passionate about it. And I was talking with another photographer and she was asking me, okay, what are you doing? Like, what? Are you, how do you do that? And I said, well, you know, I really care about our customers. And she was like, well, but I well, I care about my customers too, but mm-hmm. that doesn't help me with SEO. And it's like, well, think about it. When you care about your customers, you will offer them a lot of information, helpful information that they will spend more time on your website mm-hmm. reading. If people stay more on your website, then Google will reward you. Exactly. Then, Because they will think, okay, so this website has something very interesting. So uh, let's rank and, him up. Yeah. Yes. And like, push him up and then another thing would be the fact that if your client is really happy with their experience they're going to write a positive review Absolutely. and then these reviews the more uh, reviews you have then google will also reward you again oh, so so like a compound effect or exactly mm-hmm. so that's it and i think that we try to maintain this mindset throughout our marketing because we don't really do ads everything okay. is organic okay. uh, our seo our pinterest page our uh, instagram 
and even Yelp because we are trying to be helpful mm -hmm. and we really care about our clients and, and about their experience, this helps everything. Okay. So this, this helps our marketing. Nice. On the more like artistic side, do you have recommendations or steps that you go through with the brides or, or, or the grooms when they ask you to, to book their wedding? Where do you start? They're, what are they asking you? <laughs> Must be a lot of questions, no? Yes. I said, well, it's actually unfortunate that we don't get the chance to talk to our potential clients or potential brides uh, mm -hmm. very often. And I would encourage every bride looking for a great wedding photographer to maybe make a list of two, three, four photographers that she really, really likes, mm -hmm. like style-wise. And we okay. can get into the style, by the way, because yeah. that's something uh, very important to me important, too. Yeah. Because... I think that you have to be compatible with, with your photographer as a bride, yeah. you know, you have to feel comfortable uh, mm -hmm. on the wedding day. So make a list of two, three photographers that you really like and then have a call with them. Okay. A call of like 10, 20 minutes and get a sense of the photographer's personality mm -hmm. on what's important for them and see if, you know, you are a, a good fit. Yeah. And this is actually twofold because it's not only the clients who choose uh, the photographer very often it's the photographer who chooses the brides too. Okay. So let's say that you really, really like your bride who's mm -hmm. going to get married in Paris, which is a great idea, by the way, now mm -hmm. after the coronavirus <laughs> when all the prices are going down. <laughs> That's true. It's an opportunity. <laughs> um, you are looking for a photographer and you really like one photographer and he seems out of budget. Okay. Try to still have a call with him. It's like, okay, I'm interested and I would like to know more about you. If that photographer has a great how to say connection with you chemistry. he really chem exactly mm -hmm. chemistry and he really really likes you he might adapt his prices okay he, he might create a personalized package that would fit into your budget mm -hmm. because we don't it's I, I don't think that most of the photographers are going for the money we we are artists we want to create beautiful images that uh, make our artist soul grow but mm -hmm. in the same time we want to make people happy and we want to work with people who uh, we really like yeah. and with who we connect you know uh, i don't i don't hear photographers very often say that wow i photographed this beautiful wedding and like this big wedding and right. brought me so much money and then but i hated the the bride and mm -hmm. everyone's like well we don't really do that no, you know? yeah, it's yeah. Like, and and i think that it's it's all about compatibility compatibility yeah i don't know if i'm pronouncing that, that would correctly work. yes that would work you have to be compatible <laughs> and and here's why if you connect well with your photographer mm -hmm. then on the wedding day you're gonna feel very comfortable yeah in front of his lens mm -hmm. you're gonna forget about uh the fact that he's there and he's taking photos because you're trusting him right you, you connect it and you trust him because he's a professional mm -hmm. and what this will do is that not only it will give you peace of mind during the wedding day but also it will allow the photographer to take more um, candid photos, right. spontaneous photos that That's, look much more real. And yeah. this is what a lot of people want. A lot of the couples that I talk to and I photograph, they want to have candid photos. Authentic, yeah. Authentic yeah, and yeah, photos yeah. that show the real The real them. them. Absolutely. Exactly. I, and I this agree. is this is the most efficient way to, to get that. I, how do you how do you work like when you're talking about this, the candid photos, and I think this is the most valuable thing in a in, in a wedding day. When you talk about that, like, how do you work? Do you, do you give directions to your clients before the wedding or you're guiding them right away through their session or you're just say, forget about me? How, how, what do you do? Oh, so this is complicated. Yeah, I know. Maybe <laughs> I should break it up into uh, parts. Um, I wanted to say that I don't photograph and we as a team, we don't photograph that many weddings. Okay. We take a few select weddings every year and the core of our work is Paris photo shoots. Okay. So we photograph people who come to Paris uh -huh. to celebrate something, whether it's their first time to Paris. Okay. Let's say it's a couple. They can celebrate their first time to Paris. It can be a surprise proposal. Okay. It can be maybe they already got engaged back home, New York, California, mm -hmm. and then they're traveling to Paris for their engagement photos or just they just have a, a trip to Paris schedule. Okay. Then we have couples who get married in Paris and mm -hmm. these weddings go from elopements, which is mainly symbolic ceremony with an yeah. officiant like yourself mm -hmm. and photo shoot around the city. Okay. And it can be an intimate wedding. I would say that's around like 
when you have 20, 30 guests and then they, you can have a, a big wedding, right? Uh, like a regular wedding. And uh -huh. we, we photograph all these events. Then we have couples who come to Paris for their honeymoon. Mm -hmm. I love <laughs> couples who come on the honeymoon. I do. There's something about a couple yeah. at, right after the wedding. You know, when you mm. I think you accumulate, I've been through that, you know, yeah. so I know how it is when you get married and how stressful it is to right. plan a wedding and go through that. And, and that's like a peak uh, yeah. emotional state, uh, like a stressful emotional state. <laughs> and then you finish with the wedding and you just go <laughs> down and it's, yeah. you feel so good yeah. and you just want to be with your loved one mm -hmm. and just enjoy the place that you have chosen to for your honeymoon honeymoon like yeah. paris for mm -hmm. example and i i love honeymoon uh, sessions they they are so fun and the couples are usually very much in love with each other yeah. because it's right after the wedding absolutely and it's perfect I, I, the photos are just like they just go naturally and then we photograph people who come for their anniversaries in paris i photograph from one year anniversary to 50 years oh anniversary God, 50. yeah the couple was in their wow. in their 70s yeah. wow that's beautiful That's yes nice. yeah well love you see it, it doesn't yeah, matter yeah, the yeah. age love is there absolutely so what do you do you just you just go and tell so them what they have to do like so go ahead. there it is so for weddings i would say it's a little bit different mm -hmm. because i think that it's smart to have an engagement shoot or at least meet the photographer uh before the wedding and talk a little bit so that you get comfortable the way i try to stay invisible on the wedding day or let's say that i i and make the couple very comfortable is with my personality mm -hmm. and then with the fact that I'm from the beginning of the event I'm very close to them okay. I get very very close and they know that I'm there I'm doing my job and then I cannot get any closer than that because I got very close from the beginning mm -hmm. and then there's like okay I'm doing my job I'm there to capture uh, anything mm -hmm. everything that is happening and just ignore me now for the photo shoots it's a little bit different because we haven't met the couple before And like, let's say we have a, let's say we have one a one hour photo shoot, mm -hmm. and we have to take the photos right there. Right. We have to make the couple comfortable in within the in first no couple time. of minutes, yeah, right? That's a challenge. So, yeah. but we do prepare a little bit before, in mm -hmm. the sense that we ask the couple to send over a few inspiration images. So okay. we prepare, we usually prepare the photo shoots, uh, and we help the clients decide the couple. Maybe it's a family right. to decide on the locations on the their outfits any props they want to use and you know anything else and then we ask them for a few inspiration images it's not because we want to change our style we're mm -hmm. going to still keep our style and each artist in my team has his own or her own style mm -hmm. the inspiration images help to get a sense of what kind of couple they are and what kind of photos they want to have right okay so you might have couples who are romantic you might have couples who are very uh, conservative traditional right. and i had for example an indian couple who they never kissed during the photo shoot right. and that's fine mm -hmm. you know you can still show connection differently you can have kisses on the cheek on the forehead Absolutely. and you can hug you can dance mm -hmm. you can do a lot of uh, different things but what i want to say is that this is uh, a way to get a sense of who the couple is right. and adapt the photos to the couple mm -hmm. okay and i also have a little trick should i share it well <laughs> let's share it i have a little trick and if there are photographers listening to this it might that be useful work. for you yeah so what i do is that i start taking photos of the couple and i give them a little bit of a direction because mm -hmm. this is what you ask me like do you give them direction right. and i tell them okay well look into the camera then hold hands look at each other give her a kiss on the cheek and go for a kiss something like that just to start mm -hmm. and then at one point I stop and I tell them okay you have 10 seconds do whatever you want I'm not here and mom's not watching <laughs> and when that happens the couple is facing a like a new situation yeah. and they have to do something spontaneous right It's and I don't even take photos mm -hmm. I just stop and I watch them right. and I try to understand them I try to see who they are okay. and sometimes couples will be oh, oh we don't know what to do tell us what to do yeah. and I know okay I have to give them directions right. and I give them directions and then or okay. and maybe I have a couple who's uh, and it happened I had a couple <laughs> who were very fun and the lady started licking the face of the 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 guy yeah and i said okay well they want to have fun photos that's for sure that's mm -hmm. their personality and uh some most of the time it's the couple just starts kissing and they're very romantic so based on this 
I try to adapt uh, the energy right. of the shoot and the level of how much how much directions I give okay. to the couple. That's a very very nice test. I never I never thought about it. Like it taste base of like uh, it it comes with, um, with the experience, experience talking yes. about the experience how long have you been in business Fran? i i have started taking couples photos in 2013 13 and right. i quit my job at the end of june 2014 okay and i think that i've photographed a little bit over 1000 couples okay since then. now it all makes sense because it looks like you're everywhere on social media uh -huh. on google uh -huh. or It's really, really like surprising to see that your uh, print is everywhere. And I can see people, even your competition, people you've been working with, talking about you and hearing your name and say, oh, yeah, that's fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good reputation, I think. Well, yeah. You cannot it, say no it's, to this. It's, it's the hard work, <laughs> you know. So I think that if you work hard and you have a, a positive uh, work ethic, good things will come and, and people will say ni nice things about you. It's I agree. Inevitable. And, I agree. and as long as you are helpful and, you know, if you try to do, to do good things, yeah. usually good things happen to you. Absolutely. Yeah, what, what do you think is, uh, could be considered as your style as a photographer? I have been uh, looking for myself for a very long time mm -hmm. from the beginning and I realized that I I cannot really fit into one style. Okay. So instead of that, I try to aim towards becoming a complete wedding photographer. What What would you say, like, complete? A, a com like? Well, a complete photographer is someone who can take different kind of photos. Mm -hmm. Very often you see photographers who are very good at one thing. The, for example, beautiful bridal portraits, or beautiful okay. details, or the they take really great uh you know photojournalistic photos and very dark and moody and that that kind of uh photos i think that as a wedding photographer especially if you want to become a complete wedding photographer you kind of have to incorporate all these different skills okay i, I kind of see them like tools okay and it's something that i try to develop a lot so for example i would say that the most important uh skill as a wedding photographer is the ability to tell the story of the day okay and through images of course and not necessarily the way you see it as mm -hmm. an artist okay it's important to have an artistic a unique artistic vision mm -hmm. and that's how you can get awards you know because your photos are unique and that's how you can uh, grow as an artist of course but I think it's more important to show through your photos how the couple felt during the day, how the day, how everything felt for them right. through their eyes. And that's a little bit more wow. difficult. Yeah, so like, yeah. I think that that's the real storytelling. And I've relearned this from um, Erica and Lenny Mann from Two Men Studios. Mm -hmm. They're brilliant photographers. I, okay. I did a workshop with them uh, a few years ago. And I would say that that's the most important skill. Okay. Then, Another skill would be bridal portraits. Oh, just coming back yes. to your first skill, I have a question. Uh, Please, like how, how practically, how how would you do that? Like, can can you give me a, a, a concrete example of how would you transcribe their feeling or their vision into a photograph oh, for for the bride's listeners? Well, definitely, and and you know there are several aspects to this, and and, mm -hmm. and you know it it's complex. You you develop it, but I will give you a, a very quick example. It would be, for example, when, if the bride, um, uh, dresses, uh, gets dressed up with maybe her mom in a room. Okay. And then the bridesmaids are in the other room. Then when she walks in that room wearing her wedding dress and the bridesmaid maids see her for the first time, mm -hmm. I want to make sure to be behind the bride right. and my assistant capturing the bride's reaction because I want to, I want to capture how, you know, how the people react to the bride okay. and then, and then that's what the bride sees, Absolutely. you know, so, but my assistant will capture her reaction because we don't want to miss that uh, a moment, yeah. you know, how she feels uh, then. So that's how the bride sees that moment mm -hmm. and then we also have the moment of how she feels right. in that moment you know so this is something that uh we try to capture uh when we tell the story of the wedding day well now i now i realize when i when i uh go back into my memories uh the the most amazing pictures i've seen are, are pictures the way you're saying you're saying like the reaction of the just like you're the person 
living the moment. So now that makes sense, but I couldn't put some words on it. So thank you. It's so true. I think that as a wedding photographer on the wedding day, you should not put the camera down for one minute. For one There's second. always something happening. Mm -hmm. it, it, and the thing is, I don't remember who said it, but it was something like from all the moments that happened during that day, we captured like 1%. But that 1% is really, really important. Really you important. Know? So uh, let me get to the second skill yeah, of, of the complete wedding mm -hmm. photographer. Maybe I should write a post uh, <laughs> about this because it's really, really uh, yeah. um, cool. The yeah. second skill, I would say, it's to take beautiful bridal portraits because okay. who's the most important person on the wedding day? It's the bride. Mm -hmm. You know, It's her most important day. And you when you take beautiful portraits you want to make sure that you, you make her feel and look beautiful right so that's the main skill and uh -huh. i think that there are many great portrait photographers in the wedding industry mm -hmm. i think that's something that you you learn very quickly okay. and it's probably the second most important skill in, for a wedding photographer then I don't even know in which order should I go through the others, <laughs> but uh, I would say... You have something okay. planned. I like this. Yeah, That's I wrote good. down a few things in the subway while I was coming good, over good, good. just to make sure I like that, that I keep... Um, Preparation. Con I'm consistent with it. Mm -hmm. So I would say that the third skill would be the detail shots. Okay. And detail shots are important for two reasons. One of them is the couple invested a lot of time and uh, money in this event. Right. So they invested in the wedding dress, the shoes, the, the florals, the decoration, the Everything. artists who come to the wedding. So it's kind of pity if we don't take beautiful detail shots of of the things Everything. that uh, you know they prepared for mm -hmm. this special day. Yeah. You know, and just think about think about how much time a bride spends to find the perfect wedding dress. Right. That's a lot and of time. That's <laughs> important. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. super important. <laughs> yeah. So that's one of the reasons. And then the second reason why beautiful detail shots are important or detail photos are important is to help the other vendors at the event. Okay. And also to build relationships with the, with the other vendors, you know, because if you work with people who are nice, then you have a, how to say, you have more beautiful events and you enjoy more yes. the event. 100%. And then, of course, if you make other vendors happy, on the wedding day, they will recommend you mm -hmm. and they will work with you with pleasure, right? 100%. So I would say that detail shots are important to make the planner happy, to make the florist happy, mm -hmm. the makeup artist, the efficient, why not? Mm -hmm. You know, like e even for you, yeah. if you want to uh, show images of yourself performing a ceremony yeah, yeah, right, yeah. on your website, on your social media, you want to have beautiful photos, right? This and helps a lot, yeah. So those like detail and vendor photos are very important. Right. Then I would say family portraits are important. And yeah. at what particular moment? Like well, sometimes some of them are planned ahead. Mm -hmm. We have the family portraits uh, session, and we try to be usually very efficient in these and very particular about everyone looking great and not having sunglasses or like uh -huh. the the tie being crooked or you know the girls not having the the perfect uh how to say the legs perfect yeah. the dress is perfect everything and we quickly look and like we fix it and try to shoot very quickly uh -huh. because it might be a boring part of the the day the for day. the couple and they're just smiling and it's um it's a little bit annoying we want them to <laughs> we want the bride and groom to enjoy the wedding day right. you know it's like it's their most important day you mm -hmm. know until their first kid is born and then we want them to uh, be happy and enjoy the day. And some photos, some family photos are taken in a more organic way. In a okay. m like d during the day, like for example, you know, the first look with the father. Okay. You know, when the father sees uh, her daughter dressed in a bride and she starts crying. And mm. those are important moments. And then quickly, we quickly capture a few uh, portraits of them together. And, you know, it's also important because some guests or some family members like grandparents, they might not be around for right. a long time. Yeah. And, and maybe it's going to be their last uh, moment professional together. photos or yeah. last moments spent mm -hmm. together. And those photos are, are going to become very, very important for of the course. bride and the groom. So you, you have know? to have so this in consideration, in perspective. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Well, we have so many things to uh, you know pay attention on the, on the wedding day. It's true. And another aspect is... You know, you want to have beautiful photos of the family and of the 
parents of the bride and groom because sometimes it's them who pay for the wedding. Yeah. So <laughs> I want to make sure that those photos are great because I want to make my client happy. Of course. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you have the real client in the in the photo shoot. Yeah. Yes. And then I would say impact shots. Right. How would you how one, would you define impact shots? Shot? Well, it's it can be silhouettes, you know, uh-huh. uh, at sunset you we grab the bride and the groom from the dinner and was like let's take a quick photo right look at it's very beautiful the sunset or something where we also show the venue Mm -hmm. you know the place because when a couple chooses a a certain location to get married like let's say they come to paris Uh uh, it's really important to them so we want to make sure that we incorporate that and and these can be very artistic photos these are the shots that we want to submit to awards you know, right. to get awards, mm-hmm. uh, to contest, sorry, to okay. get awards. Or these are the photos that we might put as a background, like a screensaver on our uh, screen because we're very proud of them. Right. And these are the, the, the photos that feed our soul as an artist. Okay. You know, so I would say that these are also important. Uh-huh. And then, I tr- so I try to develop all these skills because... That's a uh, lot. It's, it's, it's part of, of a complete wedding photographer. Mm-hmm. And there's another skill that I don't try too hard actually to uh, to become very good at because it kind of comes naturally. Mm-hmm. It's the couple's photos okay. or the couple's portraits, you know. Right. And as I said before, I photographed over a thousand couples, so it, it kind of comes naturally to me. Like when I grab a camera and I have a couple in front of me, I just start I have a, already a feeling of who they are as personalities, right. and I just start to give them a few directions and make them feel comfortable. I make them feel uh, like they're enjoying the moment. I make them feel like connected and right they connect and then the photos just follow it's very easy to for me to and and you know what's the f- funny thing mm-hmm. I, when i talk to photographers very often i hear that they say like they like all all the different parts of the wedding day except for the couple's portraits because oh, they yeah. don't know what to do oh like how to how to like what guide what, them yes. what to say that's exactly it this is where the personality comes uh, very helpful and of course the right. experience yes. yeah, 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 yeah personality definitely helps mm-hmm. yes and and the fact that you connect with the couple how did you uh decided like okay you you had your business you had your your job before and then you started to to be more successful and then you said, well, I'm going to do this for a living and this is what I'm going to do like for good. What was the, the exact moment? What was the exact decision? There was not a one single point mm-hmm. in, in time when I said, okay, I have to do this. I, I've always been very, very cautious and very afraid. Okay. Yes, I am afraid. I'm very... Uh, <laughs> like all e- of us. Even when I implement a new marketing tactic or technique or I do something new, I like to test it before just to make sure that it's working. Okay. You know? So I don't even know if it matters actually mm-hmm. uh, where it comes from, but I followed a scientific, like academic career. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did a PhD and I, w- I was following this cert- a certain academic path and... I've always taken very safe decisions. Right. Like, okay, I have an opportunity. Would this be good? Okay, let's let me let me take that road. And and I've been doing these steps, and I've never taken big risk. Well, okay, I, I I've took you know risk of moving from Romania, mm-hmm. from where I'm originally from, moving to France. That was maybe a risk, you know, it being alone is, yeah. and of course, yeah, mm-hmm. not having your family to rely on. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that was a good thing. But then, I've never. Uh, being a, an adventurous person okay you know so i think that around 2011 2012 i started reading a lot of books and you know just documents articles that i could find on on internet about how to become successful right. and i read this book by napoleon hill called think and grow rich and amazing book by the way Yes, I, w- I would say that it's a really good book. Yes, yeah. I would <laughs> recommend everyone to uh, read it because the success principles there are very healthy. Mm-hmm. So I read this book and that kind of determined me to start to believe in myself and start to believe in the fact that I can achieve something. Right. I can achieve to success. I didn't really know what success meant at that time. Mm-hmm. And f- to be honest, even now I have to write down my goals to say, okay, this is what I believe that will be su- would, will signify success for me in 2020 for example right. or in five years which is one of the advices uh, highlighted in the book to write your goals uh, in the morning and in the night and read them loudly if i'm not wrong 
Yeah. Possibly, yeah. I didn't do that, yeah. but uh, I still became successful, I would yeah, say. That's good. But uh, back to your uh, initial question, I was I started on this road of you know starting this photo- my photography business, developing my photography skills, but I was still having my job and. I didn't quit my job until the last moment okay. until I was so tired at one point because I was working at sunrise, going to work <laughs> and uh, coming out of work and working in the evening. Right. I was super tired. And at one point I said, wait, maybe I should quit my job. You yeah. know, I, I am making more money than uh, with my job. So it, there's no there's reason, no reason not, to, yeah. not to do it. Yes. And that was in 2013, 2014. In 2014. 14. All right. Yes. That's that's uh, already a middle middle to long career. You're enjoying it still every day. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Yes. And I think that my goals have shifted a little bit okay. lately, in the sense that well, in the beginning, I you know like all artists or all photographers, I wanted to become you know successful, famous, of and, course, <laughs> uh, get recognition. Yeah. And in time, I realized that. I enjoy a lot entrepreneurship, not mm-hmm. only photography. I had people come up to me and say, Fran, I want to work with you. I want to do what you do. And it's like, well, okay, come along. Mm-hmm. And that's how I started to build a team. And slowly, my goal from you know building this successful brand around me or successful photography mm-hmm. uh, studio business around me shifted towards building a successful team of photographers in in Paris working with you yes how many people do you have in your team just photographers Mm -hmm. we are six photographers and we have uh, a seven photographer joining uh, soon she's a wedding photographer yes she took the wedding photos our wedding photos oh wow you're yes that's nice so I'm very happy that she can (laughs) finally join the team good can't wait for that but that's just the artist. Mm-hmm. We, I do have people who work with us on social media, studio managers who okay. uh, handle client communication before and after the events. So big operation. We have a big <laughs> operation. Yeah. Yes, that's we are good. growing. That's yes. good. Well, and it's very fulfilling, you know. Yeah, I can see that. This is a. This is also something I realized when I first met you, is that you are transpiring happiness and uh, success. And also confidence in your experience, which is uh, something that you cannot fake, I think. So I think it's a great, great, great uh, adventure that you're that you have. What are your plans for uh, the next season or the next years? Not not only in your business as an entrepreneur, but also what would you think about providing more to your bride and grooms? Do you have things in mind that you'll, you'd like to share? Definitely. The main goal for our team is to grow. Okay. To evolve. I think it's very important for us to evolve. And that's on several levels. So, for example, we are working on the website to to bring even more valuable guides and helpful guides and make their experience, the, the experience of our clients, much easier. Okay. You know, Smooth, because it's smoother. Smoother. Right. Exactly. Because yeah, there's, there's a lot of uh, of problems. Like, sorry to interrupt, but no I realized that talking more and more with bride and grooms is that a lot of people want to get married in Paris. A lot of people want to get married in France. That's destination wedding is a is a very successful uh, industry, but there's a lot of uh, miscommunication. I realized and uh, breach of matters. Let's say that in the way that clients sometimes can be handled. That's why I really appreciate the way that you are going through the communication with them. And I think it's something that we could all uh, make make better. Don't you think? Definitely. That's one of the reasons why we have a chat on our uh, website mm-hmm. instead of uh, having these um, interrupted or sequential conversations yeah. by email we allow uh, our clients to have a, a real-time cons- a conversation with us directly on the website and i try to make myself available as much as possible by whatsapp for example mm-hmm. and try to help uh, and guide our brides uh, to find the right vendors and uh, book the right photographer for them and i think this is uh, something that i learned from gary v no no, <laughs> I think it's from even Pagan, from uh-huh. uh, and I don't, don't remember which program in marketing, but he was saying something that 
as a business owner, you have to be in touch with your clients. And I'm trying, you know, I'm a, I'm answering uh, messages on Instagram mm -hmm. personally. Yeah. I want to. I uh, can testify that. Uh, <laughs> I can uh, keep an eye on the Instagram messages and the conversation with our clients because I want to understand exactly what they want. Right. And it's so you're very listening. Easy. You're listening a lot. Yes, because and, and and I talked to them. I was like, wait, how can I make this a little bit easier for them? Mm -hmm. How can I make it so that I don't have to spend the time to explain these things? How can I make it more automatic for them? Perfect. That's really really good. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's it's all going to wrap up for today. Do you have something else that you'd like to add or talk about to your to the bride and grooms listening? No, but I would love to ask you some questions or yeah, maybe other questions. I like this freestyle. Go ahead. Well, the interviewer is I, getting interviewed. Well, I, I think that we should, yeah, it, it, it should be more of a conversation, right? I, I agree so with that. So what, what do you enjoy the most from a wedding day or from a wedding? What do you really like? What do you like the most? This is probably my favorite question all the time. I have a hard time asking this question because people are usually are overwhelmed with details and they're like, oh my God, I loved everything from the from the start to the music, to the decoration, to everything. But I have, as an officiant, and maybe more as a person, a favorite moment, uh, which is also a cliche, but cliche is life in the end. Uh, I think the moment they say yes to each other, when you, uh, as an as an officiant, are asking them, looking to, to look at each other's eyes and say, yes, I want to be your wife, yes, I want to be your husband, and everybody suddenly goes in a burst of joy and applause. I think this is uh, one of the greatest. I wouldn't say achievement because you don't you don't achieve something uh, saying this, but just being the, the the person asking this to them. I think it's for me is my favorite moment. Yeah, it's this incredible. Is, yeah. You know, that's one of the moments when. Uh, <laughs> us photographers are the most focused okay. because we want to make sure that we get a perfect first kiss right oh, right yeah. after that right yeah i like this it's not a coincidence it's an intense moment yeah it is and yeah everybody everybody loved this uh, th this moment and everybody gets relieved after that in a way that you were talk talking about before like a wedding day can be very stressful sometimes can be sometimes very overwhelming with all the details sometimes things go bad uh, in, in in the schedule but as soon as the ceremony starts and this moment starts, I think it, it all goes well after that. I think. Do you have another it, question? It makes sense. <laughs> no, not necessarily. I like that. I know. I know that. Well, I do have a little gift for uh, oh. for the people who are uh, listening to the Go ahead, podcast. Please. What is it? So we prepared a guide, you know, because we were talking about the website being mm -hmm. helpful, being Very useful. Complete. Yes. Yes. So. We have different guides on our website, like how to propose, where to propose, and an elopement guide mm -hmm. that kind of goes through all the different uh, aspects of elopement from choosing the right vendor to finding the right dress to okay. choosing the a place to celebrate. And it's a lot of information. Mm -hmm. I believe that many brides don't even have the patience or the time to go through all the information. So if you don't want to go on the website and uh, read that information, you can download it uh, on a PDF. Okay. And you can read it on your phone and your tablet. Oh, it's mobile friendly. Amazing. Yes. Really so I would invite any bride who is interested in getting married in Paris to go to theparisphotographer.com mm -hmm. backslash elopement and to download the PDF guide. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you very much for uh, being my guest today and for uh, being a host as well because uh, I think you have a, a great, great, great personality and it was a pleasure to have you on the show. You can find Fran on www.theparisphotographer.com. If you want to download the guide, that's uh, the exact same address, theparisphotographer.com slash elopement. And Fran, thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. It has been an honor and a privilege. That's my pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks again for listening to the show today. You can find more information on our guests in the show notes, as well as my contact and my website. If you have any questions regarding your French wedding, I'm happy to help. Also, please do not hesitate to leave a review for the show. There's also a link for that. 
that will literally take one minute of your precious time and will mean the world to me. I always appreciate your support. Thank you again very much for your time and feedback. Wishing you a great day or a great night anywhere you are in the world. I send you some good vibrations and we'll talk to you again soon for a new episode. Bye-bye.